<laughs> Yo, what it do, St. Louis? It is Tuesday morning, 7 a.m. So y'all know what time it is, man. It's time for the St. Louis Hustle Podcast with your boy Cortez Hustle and my girl Michelle. Hey, hey. and today we're talking about comparison versus competition. How do you really win at this game of life, man? Do me a huge favor. Go ahead and comment in the chat where you're from. Drop the name of your business and or your brand if you like a free business shout out. And uh, we're not going to belabor the moment. We're going to go ahead and get this party started. Let's do it. Growing up in St. Louis has never been easy. And most say, if you want to succeed here, that you must leave and put down roots somewhere else because of the strong crabs and apparel mentality here. I don't know if I'm just an optimistic person, but to see people like Chuck Berry and Nelly make it in the music industry, or the Roberts Brothers and Dave Stewart in business, or William Lacey Clay Jr. in politics, can we blame the city, or is it that people just aren't hungry enough? We're talking to all of the movers and shakers in this town, from entertainers to politicians, social activists, and organizers, and of course, entrepreneurs. Is there a curse on this city that holds people back? Is there an unseen hand that decides who makes it and who doesn't? You're about to find out. Welcome, Welcome to St. Louis Hustle. Hustle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the St. Louis Hustle Podcast. I'm Cortez Hustle. She's Michelle A. And we are coming to you live and direct from the Monetize My Life Academy Studios here in St. Louis, Missouri. If you are not familiar with the Monetize My Life Academy Digital Product Bootcamp, then you need to familiarize yourself with that process. If you're trying to figure out how to take your gift, talent, special ability and turn it into profit, one of the easiest ways to do that is to turn it into digital products. And guess what? I've got a boot camp coming up, $47. You get a free course, two free courses, and a live training on how to turn your gifts, talents, and special ability into income. All you got to do is comment keyword boot camp, and I'm going to give you guys that link to do just that. $47? So, $47. That's $47. I'm going to help you, you right. build a multi-million dollar right. business from your gifts, Man. talents, and your knowledge. Yes, yes. That's better than down. a two-for-one giveaway. That's better <laughs> than the special that you used to get down at the Goody Goody on Tuesday morning. That's way better than the special. It's That's why Goody Goody ain't no more. You're the new Goody Goody. Down. Your boot camp <laughs> is the, the new, new Goody Goody. Goody Goody. goody. Better is. than a two-for-one. Shelly, yeah. how was your weekend, sis? Man, oh man, oh man. I was out here. I was out here. You know when the sun is out. I'm it out. was nice. It was nice. It was so nice. It was this nice. Weekend. Man, I, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, Mr. Wonderful had to catch me when he could. He was like, "Hey, can I, <laughs> hey, can I, can I get a bag? Can I chill?" Yeah. Just I was like, "Well, I would, but uh, if you don't catch me by Wednesday to make plans, I'm a, yeah, okay. Yeah. You call me on Friday talk about some Saturday sports, right? What?" Right. I can tell you where I might. I can tell you where I might be. Right, right, right. There you ain't no guarantee you gonna catch me there. That right. <laughs> you wanna oh pull God. up? I might be here. I'm thinking about four different places. You can pull up and see. If you can catch me if you can. That is the word <laughs> of the weekend. Was pull up. That that's that's kind of how it was. You know, and Mr. Wonderful. He's a good guy. You know, he's a nice guy. We still knew with this, so I still caught him. Good together, but. You know, uh, I try not to be too, too, what's the word, uh, 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 stringent or uh, uh, rigid. That's the word. I try not to be too rigid uh, yeah. because generally I be like telling suckers, look, I ain't got no time. We, I be out. <laughs> but Saturday we, we you know, winds the work, you know, we work in a little date night or whatever. And um, so we went to, uh, we went to uh, Outback. No. Yeah, out back and said Charles. And okay. you know me, the more people the merrier. I love folks, you know, and I just like the people watch. Man, look, that joker do not like crowds. <laughs> I don't know how it's gonna work, man, because he don't do crowds. He's like, man, all these people, people. <laughs> you know, I'll say this every time I date, I always wind up dating. He'll be like, all that information. Yes, yeah, sorry, Mr. Wonderful. You knew this was coming. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I always wind up dating people that are my opposite. Like I never, ever wind up with a guy that's outgoing and 
you mm -hmm. know, I always wind up with somebody that's going to kind of balance me, which is good. You know, balance right. is good. Uh, but I'm still trying to break Mr. Wonderful out of shit. I'm determined yeah. I'm going to get him on the table dancing <laughs> somewhere, doing the running man or doing the MC Hammer or something. I just got to find the right combination to crack the lock. But I'm going to get there him. You go. I'm gonna get there you him, go. There you go. That's what's up, man. Yeah. <laughs> It was extremely nice this weekend. We yeah. actually got out in the streets a little bit. Oh, uh, had a nice you little, your sugar. Little picnic. Yeah, we went and, went and got us some oh. sugar fire and uh, oh. got down by the river over there in St. Charles. Oh. And oh, y'all went. She was she was thoroughly taken aback, Michelle, by uh, how filthy the river is. Uh, <laughs> I probably shouldn't have showed her that. She's like, that's 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 stuff floating. It, what what is that? It's like <laughs> sugar sure is. It's, yeah, you know, it just, finished, it just finished flooding, and <laughs> you know, it's, this the, the floods pull stuff out of people's backyards and stuff. So it's just oh, that's, that's just how it goes. Shit, you you see lawn chairs and barbecue yeah. pits floating down the river. <laughs> like, like, like that's that's normal, sugar. She's like, no, wow, that that that's disgusting. I just took her out there for a picnic. Oh, you this is what we cover to eat? This is what we doing? Huh? This, this is romantic. We watching the family barbecue just right. Okay, um, yes. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's that's how I be. That's how I be. Um, uh, so real quick, man, these COVID numbers, eh, eh, mm -hmm. eh, these COVID numbers looking real. I don't know. Can can COVID numbers look real lovely? I don't know if that's the right. Can you say COVID and lovely at, in the same sentence? Can no, you? I don't know. <laughs> uh, they're looking better. They're looking better. Go. So we were only up for Missouri, three thousand people. Mm. I mean, we were mm. only up three thousand people. That's that's not bad considering we were jumping by tens of thousands. Over the right. weeks, right? So right. Missouri just up four thousand, Illinois like three thousand, like two and a half oh, three thousand. So yeah. people are getting vaccinated. Again, I'm still on the fence. I I probably will. Don't don't that to you, nobody. But God, <laughs> I I probably am gonna get vaccinated. I had another uh, COVID scare. I came in contact with somebody that had it, and um, mm -hmm. uh, I was like, I goes and gets. I think I average every three months getting tested. Uh, they'd be like, oh, right. purple flowers. Like, hey, how you doing? Um, <laughs> but I went and got tested this time and no COVID. Thank you. But yeah. I came away with some pneumonia. I was yeah. like, I, I had a cough. Remember last week's cough that made me yeah. run off the sink? Yeah. 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 They said I had a touch all over the year. So, but yeah, I, I'm, they, I'm good. They see you pull up like, oh, lady, you know the drill. Right. Exactly. Here your swab, do your own self. Just grab it up there, and then there it is. So, yeah. But um, yeah, that, that's that's kind of what we're doing. So, um, I'm kind of. You excited. know what? Speaking of the COVID, though, I, I would I would like to know the breakdown. And I shared this with my sugar. If if you go into St. Charles, mm -hmm. mask or welcome, but not mandatory, right? Mm -hmm. I would like to know. What is the breakdown statistically of the numbers? Yeah. Like that three thousand increase? How many of that Saint increase Charles is <laughs> in St. Charles? Right? I, I want to know because they ain't been mask ain't been mandatory in St. Charles ever. Hmm. It's like they did that little little ten day stretch, and they like the masks are coming off people. And Dang. I would like to know. Because, and I think those are the kind of numbers that they might keep from us. Because it's like, yeah. if they ain't had no huge spikes and increases and they ain't wearing no masks over there, then yeah. somebody lying. So, oh. <laughs> somebody lying. So, so uh, I would like to know what those numbers are. Because we, I, I was, we went to Sugar Fire, you know, one of my mm -hmm. favorite barbecue joints here in St. Louis. And okay. when you walk in and you go, you know, they weave you through the line and get your stuff. And as soon as you walk in the first part of the line, they got their, uh, they're kind of like their COVID commandments, right? They got four COVID right. commandments. And, and one of them is uh, mask are welcome, uh, but not mandatory. And then the other commandment is uh, try to stay six feet, but really just be nice just in general. Okay. And I'm like, you know what? They own it, man. Because it's like, yeah, we're going to try to stay six feet. But if I kind of try to pass through and, and we get a little close, don't be a jerk about it. Just, hey, man, I'm just passing through it, man. I'm just just call for me and keep it going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just going to sneeze and keep it moving, man. I'm not, there you know, just, just hit me with the bless you and, and, and just, you, know. me. <laughs> you get a little spittle right there on your face. You want to get that. Oh, you're welcome. Welcome to St. Charles. Welcome to St. Charles. You know what? It's yeah. funny, too, because I actually forgot. I went in a quick trip the other day and forgot to put my mask on. Everybody's saying nothing to me. And I was wondering, I did get a few looks, right? 
<laughs> you, got black D, you got the look from you, you got your own look. look from other people. <laughs> I got my own look from the from other people. Here's the thing. This is what I love about black people. I mean, shit, they love everybody. But this is what I love about black people. When we on board, we on board. Now it took us a minute to get there, but once we there, I don't walk in no place without a mask on. Oh yeah, yeah. She, they yeah. look at you like you got cooties. Like, oh, oh, you're dirty. I, you don't have a I'm mask on, dirty girl. How dare you? How dare you? What you know? Uh, Look, I got the same look when uh, I went overseas to India, and they love bidets in India. They mm -hmm. love bidets. And and I use the bath. They're in public bathrooms everywhere, which I think that's kind of nasty because you, there's no way to sanitize in the bathroom. And it's not, you don't just shoot up your butt. It's got a handle and a nozzle, so you got to lift that joke off and take care of your business. Oh, wow. I'm not touching it behind whoever came to <laughs> there. I'm not touching it. But this place that I was, they had a, a, a worksite attendant. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, she's a little tangled. I ain't gonna get on about her eyes tangled because you know healthcare over there is different. But I used the bathroom and I came out and I she didn't hear the, the, the I guess she didn't hear the thing for the bidet. Mm -hmm. And baby, when I tell you she gave me the the good eye she had was thank. <laughs> she looked at me like I left out of there without washing my hands. She looked at me <laughs> like I was nasty, nasty because I didn't bidet. I was yeah. like, who yeah. does that? Oh. Yeah, uh, so I got to look. I, I can <laughs> tell by the way you don't bidet, you ain't from around here. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't bidet all day. You nasty. You got to bidet every day. Don't be nasty. So I don't know. Man, we got to get those here. We got to get more bidets in the United yeah. States. And I need to go to somebody. So this is what I need real quick. We're going to get into the A word of the day. I need somebody that's rich that have a bidet in their bathroom. That automatic now don't bring me no joke, no stuff with no handles. But if you got an automatic, <laughs> invite me to your house so I can experience the bidet. Clean it real good now. Don't have no dirty water shooting up my tip. <laughs> but it might be over. I'd like to see what it feels like. I go by my own. There you not go. doing that. Just invite <laughs> me over. There it is. There That's it is. what's up. That's what's up. Right here on the St. Louis Social Podcast, we get into something that we call the Michelle A word of the day. And uh, wherever my man is, we still waiting on that jingle. We still waiting right. on the beat, the beatbox. Right. The, right. You, know, you know, get give us give us something. Uh, um, can we you know? I mean, just can we uh, 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 give me there something? Go. Just got the word of the day. 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 There you go. <laughs> okay, well, I was going to hit my dad. Well, I, you don't want that. Okay. A word of the day. Patience, people. Patience. Mm. There it is. People say it's a virtue. It's all kinds of phrases and sayings about the word patience, right? But really, when you dig into it, um, let's open it up. I was reading some commentary because that's what I like to do on my time read commentaries. And I, I heard an interesting point of view where someone, you know, people always say, ooh, don't ask God for patience because if you ask God for patience, then you're going to send some badger way to test your patience. And this commentary that I was reading said, you know what? That paints God as the bad guy. Don't do that, people. Don't do that. Our God is good and he gives good things. Okay? The bad things in this world, they don't come from God. Now, God will see some stuff coming and allow it. He'll allow it if he knows it's going to build strength and character in you. He'll allow it, but God don't do bad things because he's a good He's a good God. So good when we <laughs> good God. So when we think about patience, right, we, we can't think about it from a standpoint of, oh, don't ask for it. But rather, we should think about it from a standpoint of, you can ask God for patience, but let's be specific, right? Don't just ask for it in a general sense. Because when things come your way that are not bad, that are not good, that gets interpreted as, oh, this must be God, right? Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily mm -hmm. true. If you're specific when you ask for patience, Lord, give me more patience with my children, okay? Mm -hmm. Lord, give me more mm -hmm. patience on my job. I don't want to slap nobody when I go back. I need patience <laughs> in that area, Lord. I, when I ask for patience specifically not to slap nobody on the job, he's not going to send me somebody to slap. Right. I'm going to have right. more patience and I won't slap nobody. That's what's going to happen, you know? So let's just change our frame of, of mind, right? We need patience, right? And we, I don't care what you think. I don't care what you believe in, left or right, up or down. 
we need tough times, right? We we they they strengthen us and they make us grow. If everything went our way, why would we need patience? Because everything yeah. goes our way. We don't have to be patient about anything. You know what I'm saying? So there has to be challenges that come in our life to build endurance in us. You want to get mm-hmm. on endurance? What you doing? What you doing? So yeah. again, patience. Ask for it by name. Just be specific. Give me patience, Lord, with Mr. Wonder. Oh, sorry. <laughs> People are like, I become the star of the show. Easy. No. <laughs> Keep stunting like you did, sir. No. <laughs> That's the A word of the day. A, A, A. The word of the day. The word of the day. The no, word of the day. Right this. here on the St. Louis Hustle podcast. That's the word of the day. A word. Uh, you're right, man. And I think I think patience is actually one of my superpowers. Um, you know what? We was talking about that because you yeah. have a cape on with the letter P on the back. I think, that, I think that is one of my superpowers. And I like to say life is short, but at the same time, it's incredibly long. I don't know where you're going. Yeah, because think about it. When we typically say life is short is usually because we want to experience something like hey man life is short yolo you only live once let's 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 oh. do something fun let's do and and it's like if you don't do this now then you're not gonna do it and then it's like okay so i didn't do it today and i didn't miss the opportunity because i lived another 40 years now i'm 80 years old uh talking about man life is short well, listen, <laughs> you've been here for 80 years. What do you mean? Life is right, short. Right, right. You know? 80 years. Your life is not short. You just don't know what to do with your time. So patience is one of those things that you absolutely have to, you know, just, I, I think I try to make sure that I am living all I want to live out every single day. But right. some of the plans and the things that I have, we're going to get into competition versus comparison. You yeah. know, marching down this life and being successful. Mm-hmm. Success takes patience, right? It is uh, what they say. Uh, success is not built in a day, but it is built daily. So what? let's Man, get into. Man. Let's see. What say ye, Facebook? Angela says, nice mug, Cortez, because it got a letter A for double A <laughs> uh, for Angela Alexander. No, it's for Aletha, a.k.a. Sugar. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Double A. (laughs) And it is coffee with about a teaspoon of coconut oil this morning. That's Uh, that's what we're doing this morning. Teaspoon of what? What you got in there? Teaspoon uh, of what? The the, the teaspoon of coconut oil is is how we rock. And so, uh, Michelle, you recently embarked on a brand new journey in your life, and you decided to kind of bring some of that stuff to the show this morning. So we're talking comparison versus yes. competition. I'm going to let you drive the day and I'll just kind of kind of chime in. Let's let's okay. get into it. Okay. So um so as as Cortez was saying, I'm I'm embarking on this new chapter in my life, right? Uh, we're going to call it chapter 50. I'm not going to keep putting myself <laughs> out there too many more times. Um but as the older I get, like the all of, I get all these epiphanies, right? And mm-hmm. and what I what my goal is and my mission is, I say this to my children all the time, and I'm gonna share it with you guys because if you are not 50, or even if you are older, older than 50, get it now, right? Sooner than later, to get these these epiphanies, these messages or whatnot. So I get them and then I'm gonna share them with y'all, right? So you guys know that I'm I'm a I'm a big subscriber in self-love. I I subscribe, I, I mash the button. For self love, you know, mm-hmm. and as a as a part of that journey, one of the things that I learned that was super duper key is is the two C words, right? Comparison and competition. Now, realistically, in life, there's no way to get away from competition. Whether you're mm-hmm. on your job or or you're in some sort of just even in what we do, there's mm-hmm. healthy competition, for lack of a better mm-hmm. term. Yeah. But I think where the lines get blurred and people get all out of whack is when healthy competition becomes unhealthy and competition becomes unhealthy when you compare yourself. Mm-hmm. And that is a very that should have been a word of the day is compare because you 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 really can't you can't do it. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Because we're in this this whole social media um, uh, uh 
to what we call this era, social media era, social comparison is really, really big. You know, it's a psychology term. It's used to describe the tendency to socially compare ourselves to other people, our homes, our financial statements, um, our lives, you know, who's dating who, who's driving what. We look at mm -hmm. all of the things on the outside and we look over the gate at what someone else has and we determine that to be the standard. Right. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. determined for someone else to be the standard. Then we try to match their standard. Dare I say, beat their standard. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's where the unhealthy part of competition comes in. Right. Yeah. Um, I think it's something that can be really, really damaging to self. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, talk about some pitfalls that comparison. We'll talk about both C words, but I want to start off with comparison because I think it is the thing that can not only destroy a person on the inside, who you mm -hmm. are, who you were made to be, but it also can destroy relationships. It can put a Ooh. hindrance on relationships. It, it really can. We're going, we going there today too? Okay. You know what? I didn't plan <laughs> on it and I'm hoping that certain people in my life don't take offense, but um, I have yeah. a uh, I have a close friend and we've been close for years and um, this sometimes happens happens between us. Now, when we were younger. Yeah, I think we both used to do it because we were, you know, we didn't really know. But as mm -hmm. I, you know, I would even say over the last few years, as I became aware of more self-aware and I saw myself doing it, I stopped it. Right. Yeah. But it's the kind of thing where you can't look at your friend, your neighbor, mm -hmm. your sister, your brother, whoever, and go, oh, well, I have that better. Or, you know, sometimes we find things that we are better at to make us feel better about ourselves, right? Yeah. Or yeah. we find something that they're worse at to make us feel better about ourselves. Yeah. And yeah. and that's not how you build self-esteem. It's yeah, not. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Really quickly, uh, yes. guys, we, we are still giving away a free vacation every single week. Every but week. instead of the question of the day, we're doing the takeaway of the day. Mm. So what I need you to do is comment takeaway and then whatever your biggest takeaway is from today, nice. give us your takeaway. But watch this. I was listening to uh, Evan Carmichael, one of the, the, what the YouTube channels I follow. This, this dude is brilliant the way he brings his personal growth and self-development. Mm -hmm. And he says, you have a 35% chance of doing something that you want to do if you just think about doing it. But he says, when you write wow. it down, yep. that doubles. He said, man, so 35 to 70, just when you write it down. So write it in the comments. That's writing it down, right? Mm -hmm. And then he says, add a plan to it. So I want you guys to go from 35, write it down. What is your biggest takeaway? And then if it's a takeaway, what is a one action step that you're going to do this week to implement it? Now it goes to 70% chance that you're going to do it, Absolutely. right? And then when you put a plan to it, it goes to 90%. Absolutely. And then when you tell somebody about the plan, it goes to yeah. 95%. Yep. So yep. by you doing the takeaway of the day, if it's something you learned and you write it down, give us an action plan. And because you're saying that publicly, you got a 95% chance yep. of actually doing it. So takeaway of the day, put it in the comments and you have to put takeaway. So I know how to, you know, put you into the drawing for the free vacation. And we do our yes. drawings on Wednesdays. So uh, we got a few more minutes before our commercial break. So let's yes. dive on in. Michelle, what you got? First of all, I get to go on vacation with whoever wins. Thank you very much. OK, <laughs> so the five pitfalls. We'll start these before our break. The five pitfalls of, of uh, comparison. We'll talk about a couple of them. When you compare yourself to others. Comparison creates dissatisfaction. Oh, yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Comparing mm -hmm. yourself to others causes you to be dissatisfied with who you are. Ultimately, that's what you're saying. You're looking over there at Keisha and Tisha now, admiring what they have going on. And ultimately, you're saying, I don't like who I am. And I don't like what I have. I want they stuff. You know, instead of doing that, consider how many ways. Boy, uh, think about your blessings. When you begin to compare yourself to someone else, think about what you do have. Because really, mm -hmm. honestly, if you really take the time to think about all the things that you do have, right? Not a comparison to Keisha or Tisha, 
Just think about what you have in your life. You can find the gratitude. You'll find the thankfulness and mm -hmm. your life won't really look that bad. Here's the thing. If you look at your life and you don't like what you see, then change it. <laughs> change it. My biggest pet peeve, and this is so off the record, this is not part of the thing today, but my pet peeve is for people that don't like what's going on in their life mm -hmm. and they do nothing but complain about it. You're not doing anything to change your situation, yet you're unhappy yeah. in your situation. Well, let me tell you something. The biggest way for something to stay the same is to not do nothing. <laughs> you got to do something. Complaining ain't going to do it. Complaining ain't there it do is. It. Complain ain't gonna do nothing but give me the hang up on girl. Well, I got to go. Well, I got all right. We'll take it. I, I can't. I'm a person of action. Right. I gotta, you heard go. me. I gotta go. The squirrels is coming. We just you just can't afford to stay out there. So yeah, you know, find those things to be thankful for in your life, your health, your strength, your yeah. your family, your friends, you know, and if you don't have that, then that's a good place to start making changes. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's very true when I say comparison is a thief of joy. Uh, because it really oh. is. It, it really is what have you looking like. Man, and the other thing about comparison is mm -hmm. when you're looking at Keisha and them and you're looking at John and, and the things that they have and one thing you cannot ever see mm -hmm. is what they went through. And if I start, if you look at what I have mm -hmm. and you want what I have, but yeah. then I have to tell you what I had to go through to get it, right. all the trauma and the pain. And, and come on. Yeah. So you can't you can't because you, you like you don't want you, you, you don't want this smoke. You, I made it look good. But what I had to go through to you don't want this smoke. So, so stop looking at other folks, man, because you, you might not want that smoke. You may not. I would say this real quick because I know we're coming down on that time for break, but I'm going to say this. That is on my job. Everybody, you know me, you know me. Been on my job 23 years. And and there are some folks that look at me in position and they say, ah, you, you just, you've been here this long. You just cushy, you know. And and yes, I'm, I'm, I ain't cushy. I'm blessed. I am favored by God and man. Okay. I'm going to say that. But mm -hmm. do you know what I went through in 23 years? To get where I am and do what I do and sit how I sit, walk how I walk, and talk how I talk. You don't know mm -hmm. what I had to endure them 23 years, 20 of them years, what I had right. to take. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To remain professional, to keep a roof over here and keep my my motivation was, of course, you know, I knew God had me, but my motivation was my kids. I knew I ain't mm -hmm. had no options. It was the best right. job I'd ever had. I was making the most money I'd ever had without a college education. You know what I'm saying? God mm -hmm. had blessed. So, but I needed those tough times. Back to patience. Yeah. I needed those tough times because they made me the woman that I am today. God already knew what I was going to have mm -hmm. to endure. But those times helped me walk it out so I would know. That's so right. So I would know. So you can have confidence in man. what God has already put inside of you, man. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to keep running through this, guys. We've got some pitfalls. And then, of course, we don't do anything in terms of talking about the pitfalls without talking about solutions because we are solution oriented on the Cortez. Uh, I mean, the St. Louis Hustle podcast. I'm, I'm already jumping to tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> That's how move. Moving before, the shit. Uh, before we get to the rest of them, though, I do want to uh, play this short, take this short commercial break, guys, and pay attention to uh, this particular commercial break, man, because you guys got a special gift talent that Michelle, there's so many people walking around struggling financially. Oh mm. And if they only knew they are literally sitting on a gold mine between their ears, they yeah. just don't know what's really going on because work has got them stressed out and all they can see is work family. No, I want you to see that you can take your gifts, your talents, your special yes. abilities and turn those into an income stream. So we got to take a quick commercial break. And keep it locked right here. On the other side of this break, we're getting more into comparison versus competition. 
Hey, my friend, listen, you've got a gift, talent, special ability. Why are you sitting on it and not turning it into a digital product so that you can market and sell it online? Hey, I'm H. Cortez, author of Monetize My Life, four incredibly simple ways to turn your passions into profits. And that's exactly what I do. I'm hosting a boot camp called a Digital Product Boot Camp that will teach you how to turn your gifts, talents, your intellectual capital into a digital product you can market and sell online. But guess what? Don't just take it from me. Let me let you hear from one of my students how excited she is about what this process has done for her. Hey, Coach Cortez, it's me, Ariel. I just wanted to thank you for helping me to create my product this weekend and launch the product with the systems in place. Man, I'm, I'm just truly amazed. Like, I got seven sales in four days. And I've been thinking to myself, why didn't I do this thing and launch this thing a long time ago? But nevertheless, it's launched, it's lit, it's hot. So I'm appreciative, I'm thankful, and I'm looking forward to creating more products and more success with you. Thank you so much. Wow, seven sales in four days. And then she sent me this text message where she got two more sales overnight. How would you like to turn your gifts, talents, special abilities, intellect, into digital products that will allow you to wake up to new money every day. All you gotta do is click the link around this video to register for the Digital Products Bootcamp, and I hope to see you on the inside. All right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Honey, bunches of oats is what going down in the chalet house. So listen, they are not a sponsor of the show. I know they are I not. Blurred that out. Uh, <laughs> my bad, sorry. My bad. Hey, but if they'd like to sponsor, uh, hey, I'm they, they can they can come in with the somebody, sponsorship. Somebody <laughs> local for post. Okay. Comment boot camp if you know that you want to turn this gold mine that you're sitting on your experiences, your gifts, your talents, the things you're passionate about. I'm gonna say this, Michelle. I'm gonna get back on track. Mm -hmm. The path to financial success in this country where we are in a capitalistic democracy is for you to find one or two ways to get paid for one or two things that mm -hmm. you already love to do. Yeah. Then you simply build a brand and a system around it. And we want to help you do that. So comment keyword bootcamp if you want the details on the digital product bootcamp class and course. So we were uh, we had only got to the first of yeah. the five pitfalls. So let's go ahead and run through these so we can get to some solutions. Okay, awesome. All right, so pitfall number two, dose. Comparisons aren't accurate, people, especially in the world of social media. I've seen <laughs> so many adults, grown people, adults that are adulting. They've been adulting for a long time. I see the foolishness that takes place online or that come out people's mouth. Oh, man, they do it big. They Let me tell you something. Comparisons, when you're looking over the gate at somebody else's stuff, um, oftentimes what you see in other people is what they what they want you to see, right? Mm -hmm. Especially mm -hmm. online. And you get that, you can get that interacting with your homegirl and your homeboy. Okay. They're going to show you what they want you to see. However, online, Facade. Very, very few people live realistic lives online. You know what I'm saying? I mean, mm -hmm. Cortez and I, we real. Yeah. <laughs> but people outside of us, don't trust them. Don't trust them. Because there is not going to be accurate. Um, when you see those people in their private lives, it's a little bit different. You yeah. know what I'm saying? People that look like they got the greatest relationship. Man, talk. I had a fact this is all so off the subject. I'm gonna get back. I had a Facebook crush on this one guy this years ago. I had a Facebook crush on this guy, and uh he was really inspirational and everything. And he would send me messages, and I would send him messages. I had to work my way up to that point because I was like fangirling and all of this. Man, mm -hmm. when I got to know that joker, he was boring. I was like, <laughs> I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan anymore. <laughs> but then he was already he was already hooked though. All of this. <laughs> and then I, then I couldn't shake him. I was like, hey, shake this dude. Be <sighs> careful. I looked over the gate and thought he was Mr. Wonderful. He was not. He was he Mr. Was, he was Mr. What the? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He was. So. so true when it comes to social media. It, yes. it is uh, like I was just showing Michelle uh, this morning before we started the show to the mm -hmm. left 
And to the right Ooh, of me, baby. I was like, if y'all could see, because y'all see, oh man, that's a nice setup and all that stuff. You go to the left and to the right, man. it's so much junk. I <laughs> see a wobble right corner and fight you. He need a belt. He need a spiking. But Goodness. I'm showing y'all what I want y'all to see. So you can't even wow. see all right. of that. And you yep. don't know. Now, to my defense, Michelle, there's a Facebook meme that goes around that says, People who deal in sloppiness like I do are geniuses. So leave me be in my genius. Um, is that what we're doing? That's, that's what I'm standing okay. on. I'm, I'm, I'm standing well, on that whenever. Now, when it's clean, I'm like, yeah, I pursue excellence in everything I do. <laughs> <laughs> when it's junky, it's like, oh, well, geniuses are, are, are known to be messy. Right, right. Einstein right. never tied his shoes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and fell out all the time. That's why he looked like that. Okay, so you know what? Here it is, true exposure. I'm sitting here with a roll of toilet paper, right to the side. Just didn't know what was going on. Bathroom way over there, toilet paper in here. I don't know what I'm going to do next time I go to the bathroom because I'm going to be stuck. I live alone. I'm going to get the paper. I got to do the work. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Ooh, all right. That felt good. That was therapeutic. Thank you, Cortez. There you Cortez. go. There you go. I, thanks. Yeah. See, somebody, we told you somebody going to get set. Hey, I'm about set free. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Okay. Uh, comparisons, when you compare yourself to other people, it stomps out your self-esteem. We just kind of covered that. Comparing yourself to others diminishes how you view yourself. It's easy to focus on the positives and everyone else while highlighting the negatives of yourself. Do yourself a favor and remember your gifts and your talents and focus on those. Do not focus on your flaws. Everybody got flaws. You don't need to point out. And, and I know that so true because I was that person that someone would say, hey, Shell, you look real cute today. Oh, this, I mean, I got a rip in my t-shirt. I mean, I, I I was that person. For every compliment someone gave me, I found something negative about myself to say. And, mm. and again, it was self-sabotaging is what it was, yeah. you know, because yeah. I wasn't healthy. Who, Jesus. I wasn't healthy enough on the inside to receive Mm -hmm. to receive compliments you know what i'm saying and and that's uh it, it, it all we all going back to the whole self-love thing but that is just the beginning is not comparing yourself so i'm gonna just uh, again extra nugget learn how to handle the compliments and if you don't see any good in yourself when someone says gosh you're you know you're very pretty i, I get that sometimes right i, I have strict I don't know, this is not bragging, but I have strangers that walk up to me, black and white, men and women, and say, you are really pretty. Like, randomly, on the street. And mm -hmm. and I always feel so awkward. And I and, and a lot of times I question God, like, God, why did you, like, why would somebody just walk up and tell me that, you know? And mm -hmm. it is to build those things. If other people can see my beauty, why can't I? You know? Mm -hmm. And and I said, yeah. it, it can't start with them. It can't start with them. It's got to right. start with me. Oh, another show. Okay. Back into the uh, comparisons. I felt the thing coming. Um, comparisons <laughs> move you sideways. I love this one. When you compare yourself. I'm trying not to go in. I promise I am. <laughs> when you compare yourself to others, you halt forward motion. Right? Mm -hmm. It's almost as bad as going backwards. When you compare yeah. yourself to someone else, you're not moving forward. And you waste a lot of time assessing and reassessing and trying to recreate yourself into someone that you're not. Glory to God. Comparisons mm -hmm. are a lateral move. Yeah. I'll sit that yeah. there and wait. Comparisons are a lateral move. You are going this way. You're not moving forward. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. not moving higher. You're just doing this. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. assessing and reassessing and, okay, they're doing that now. And, oh, okay, I got to do that now. Okay, well, I got to fix that and do that. You don't move forward. You stay stuck. You stay bound. Don't do it. It's a trap. Uh, yeah. The next one. Oh, go ahead, please. You have a comment on that? Uh, you know, no, I go ahead. I'll chime in after this next one because I okay. want to get that one too. Okay. This is the last one. Comparisons dishonor your true, the true you. Okay. As mm -hmm. you make comparisons, you may begin to make changes to emulate those you admire or envy. Perhaps you change the way you dress. You adjust your, vocab your vocabulary, you abandon trusted friends. That's a big one. Or you try mm -hmm. to adopt a different lifestyle. Uh, yet you may discover um, you feel, uh, oh, 
okay, I'm gonna just paraphrase this. You, it makes you feel frustrated in the end. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Changes that alter the real you, dishonor the person that God created you to be. Boom, drops the mic. Yeah. Yeah. It's never worth it. That's why you gotta get to know, you gotta get to know God for who mm-hmm. he is. That way you can you can kind of get to know why he made you and who he made you. Those are two keys. I didn't learn not to compare myself until I took the time to discover who God was, all of his attributes. He's wonderful, he's kind, he's loving, he's mercy, merciful, he's infinite. He is, he's full of love, grace, wisdom, all of those things. I had to discover those things and live in them and, and really breathe them and ingest them and meditate on them. Then I started looking at why, why, why am I here? Why do he make me? Like what purpose mm-hmm. do I serve? And when I started looking at that, then I started looking at what does God say about me? Not what Fred or Tom, Dick, and Harry, or Susan say about me, but what does God say about me? And if God is the creator of this whole universe, he He structured our bodies with cells and, and, and this whole world with atoms and nucleuses and all of this wonderful stuff, he made me. He's a big God. If that God says, I am the apple of his eye, I am as precious as real jewels, what can man yeah. say about me? Why would I look at someone else's opinion when that God thinks I'm the bees, bees, man, he loves me. That's it. I don't need That's to compare it. myself to nobody else because he told me who I was. I'm his. There you go. I'm accepted. There it is. Boom. And Those everybody needs to know that. And, right. and I think what happens is even when you get into this mode, you don't realize that when what you're often comparing yourself to, and this is how comparison shapes up for me. And I can't remember who said this, but I always try. I want to give credit to whoever I heard, first heard this, but I think it was Damon John. Matter of fact, I think it was Damon John. He said, what we tend to do is compare our blooper reel to other people's highlight reel. Ooh, well, you just be coming with the nuggets. And that is, that's where the low self-esteem comes from. It's like, I'm comparing, I'm sitting around and uh, I'm on the couch and my basketball shorts and my raggedy T-shirt. And then they show Itra's elbow on the TV and he's got on a thousand dollar suit and a nice watch. And he's got a couple beautiful women hanging on him. And I'm comparing myself right now to him after he's had a glam squad. He's freshly trimmed, cut up. I'm comparing my everyday life to his extremely well put together life. And now I want to start beating myself up because I don't look like that. Well, hell, right. if you had a multi-million dollar acting career and mm-hmm. you had coaches and trainers to teach you how to walk, how to stand, how to look debonair and dapper, somebody dressing you, somebody shaving you, and every before you ever go on a camera, you're always clean. Well, hell, yeah. I'd be all right too. Thank you. Thank <laughs> so you'd be your best. Let's <laughs> stop comparing our blooper reel to mm, other people's that. highlight reel. That's so good. Right? Really yes. quickly, guys, don't forget, give us your takeaway of the yes. day. And yes. also just comment takeaway and your biggest takeaway. But don't just take away what is your action plan? What are you going to yes. do to mm-hmm. implement what you learned today? And like we said, man, we didn't just want to give you the doom and the gloom. We yes. want you to be able to recognize the errors if you're making some of these mistakes, if you're heading towards some of these pitfalls, but yeah. then if you have already fallen, right? We want you to avoid them all together. Yeah. If you have already fallen in one of these jokers, then let us show you how to get out too. Yeah, that's that's it. You know, um, if you can find your way out of that that world of comparison, I mean that's acknowledging is the first step. And, you know, as we, you know, we get into some of the ways of how to actually win the race or, you know, last week we had our, our awesome guest on and, and it was Seth Miller, I think, and we were talking about how to be a winner, you know, and what winners do. Um, these, I think, are very basic, basic parts to how to be. These are practical one and two beginner steps on how to be a winner. You know what I'm saying? This is this is the very. OK. What, what, this what is that Seth's is. book, The All Black right. Collar Mindset, The Art of Strategic Thinking by Seth A. Miller. Wait, wasn't I supposed to get a book too? Yeah, I don't know I, what happened with that. I, I, what the, what the, <laughs> what the, what? Yeah, okay. But, he sent me mine well, first. Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> damn. 
Okay, it's, but that's okay. He, he, said, he said, after you finish reading it, then give it to Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> and tell ain't no pictures of it, so it'll be a quick read. Okay. <laughs> there it is. I don't mind. I ain't, I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad. But, but you know, so when we were we were talking to Seth about that, you know, about being a winner and everything last week, I think um, the art of not comparing yourself, that's a great first step, right, in, in, yeah. in on the road to being a winner. This is one thing. It's a very practical step. We're going to talk about some other things here. Um, and Cortez, I know you definitely have some things to lend to this subject. But one mm -hmm. of the things that a person can do is, especially with social media, we all can just live on social media scrolling and looking at this person do this and this person. Sometimes we allow that to make us mad or frustrated. First mm -hmm. of all, if you are following somebody that makes you mad, and frustrated, baby, unfollow them. Why? Unfollow them. Why are you complaining mm -hmm. about what somebody's doing on their page and it's as simple as a click and they're gone, right? right? <laughs> right. But like, why? But something else, though, that you can do, if you look over the gate and you find yourself, and I had to do this, I had to be honest with myself. I found myself, there were some people on my social media, on my timeline, that I found myself in being them, right? Other mm -hmm. females that I was just like, I, I mean, I do that. I mean, I, I, I probably can do that too. I, I mean, I did that. I've been did that. And mm -hmm. I start comparing myself, what they were doing based on what I used to do. Mm -hmm. I, I said, oh no, that's I gotta stop that. And so I unfriended a lot of people. I'm cleaning them up. I'm cleaning my friends list now, but uh, another story. But I had to unfriend some people, and not because of anything that they did. It was me. It was yeah. me. Mm -hmm. I couldn't resist that temptation to look at that person or those people and line myself up. So I had to remove that so that it's not playing in my mind, you know, mm -hmm. and, and what people don't do. We don't take the practicality and the steps of what it takes to actually do certain things. We'll say, don't compare yourself to other people. But how do you actually do that? Well, mm -hmm. you're going to have to talk to yourself. First of all, I want you to understand that 95 99% of women talk to ourselves anyway. Okay, we just do it when y'all men ain't around. Yeah. And if you're like me, hell, you do it when y'all are around. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Wonderful will be like, who are you talking to? Get out of my business. <laughs> we ain't talking to you. <laughs> look, look, get out of our business. We right. ain't talking to you. <laughs> right, we ain't talking to you. Trying to have a proper conversation over here. You know, <laughs> but, but you're going to have to talk to yourself. So when those thoughts yeah. come, you're going to have to talk the more you're gonna have to talk to those thoughts and count them down you got to strike them down now you might think yeah. it sound a little churchy you might think it sound a little something but when them thoughts come to say mm, you ain't gonna measure up to her you'll never be her you know what i'm saying look at how she looking look at you the devil is a lie i'm beautiful i'm fearfully and wonderfully made i look at i look at myself in the mirror in the mornings no lashes no makeup no nothing and i look in the mirror and i say michelle i love you Michelle, you are beautiful. And I just stare at me with my crooked smile and my overbite. And I love on me. I love on me. And I have to do it. And I have to do it out loud because our mind is often not our friend. You know what I'm saying? So you you can't really think it away. I'm, I'm going to just think happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. No, <laughs> you got to say happy stuff. And you got to speak affirmation. You can't wait for somebody else to come around. Now, I love when Mr. Wonderful tell me wonderful things. But when he don't do it, which we got to get that together, Mr. Wonder. Hold on. <laughs> when he don't do it, I do it over me. I look in the mirror and say, damn, girl, what's your mm -hmm. name is? What's mm -hmm. your name? I look at me and I, and I do that. I haven't always. I used to cringe when I looked in the mirror. And I didn't put on COVID. has not been kind. <laughs> COVID has done a little number on me. But you know what? I still look in the mirror and I'm like, you know what? Whether I'm 205 yeah. or 245, I love me. Yeah. That's where it starts. Yeah. And that's yeah. powerful. And, and by no means are we saying if you want to grow and evolve to a higher version of yourself that you don't do that based on success that you see. Right. But it's, it's all about self-awareness yes. and it's about motive. Yes, right? there it is. It starts there. It starts with me saying, okay, Cortez, I don't want to just be successful because somebody else is successful thank you thank you i want to be successful because the god that created me put genius in me and i'm oh, not Lord. living up to that genius thank you mm. so mm. that's why that's my motive i'm aware enough in yes. myself to say yes dude you brilliant and yes. you ain't walking it out right three things Very i learned about lisa nichols 
uh, uh, from Lisa Nichols. When I do my morning motivation, I'm always got my earbuds on. I go downstairs, get my workout in. I would say about four out of five mornings I would go and work out, right? I might uh-huh. skip a day. But I listened and she said, man, when I got diagnosed with clinical depression and they wanted to put me on Prozac, I said, hold up, doc, hold up. Listen, what does clinical depression mean? That means you, you say it all the time. And the doctor went, yeah, kind of, sort of, but in a deeper meaning. And she's like, okay, well, listen, I think I can go fix this myself <laughs> And before I take this Prozac. And the doctor was like, hey, listen, this is serious. She's like, I know, I know it's serious, but if you give me a minute, let me go regroup. And the uh, doctor said, listen, I could lose my license because I got to tell you what is clinically found. So you got to come back in 30 days. In 30 days, if you ain't fixed it yourself, then you got to get on these meds. And she said, Doc, if I ain't well in 30 days, I'm going to take all the pros that you want me to take and everything else wow. too. She wow. went home and she did three things. She okay. said, every day I got in the mirror and I told, I started using the power of I am. Mm. I am. You fill in the blank for yourself. There's so much in what you just said. The power Number of two, I she said, mm. I forgive me for you fill in the blank whatever that is right and number three this is transformation right Mm. i'm i am committed to so you Mm. can't just say you want to change you gotta be specific what exactly are you changing so every day i am powerful beautiful wonderful successful strong Mm. intelligent whatever fill in the blank I forgive me for, Cortez, you skipped that workout yesterday. Hey, that's okay. I forgive you, bro. Let's get back on track today. I forgive me for, and number three, I am committed to excellence in my fatherhood, in my sonhood, in my unclehood, in my nephewhood, in my cousinhood, in my friendhood, in my businesshood. I am committed to excellence in everything. And she said, I did that for 30 days. When I went back to the doctor, the doctor said, not only do you not need no Prozac? I need to be on whatever you want. <laughs> whatever you done took, mm-hmm. share it with me. <laughs> right, right. So right. When, when you think about that is, is when you're looking to grow, make sure you're checking your motive. Yeah. It's not growing because I'm jealous and I'm trying to one-up somebody else. I want to be a billionaire for the sake of being a billionaire. I'm going to be a billionaire because I believe I'm called to change communities. And the more financial resources I have, the better I can do that job. Man. Period. And I don't want to sit back and look at Kanye West, who's now the richest black man in American history, $6.6 billion, and say what he ain't doing for the community. I'm just going to say, I'm going to go and build my own $6 billion empire, and I'm going to show them how it's supposed to be done. I'm going to be the change. Man. Be the change. Be the change that you want to. Well, you couldn't. Well, you said you almost took me out with that. that I am. Because you know I'm going to take it and then supersize and remix it and everything and put a little spirit sprinkle, a little spirit, <laughs> a little Jesus, sprinkle of Jesus on it. You said the power of I am. Yeah. The power of I am. The power of I am. Now, if you know your battle, you know that God is the great I am. I am that I am. Walk in the power of I am. There's so much in that. So if you just start with I am blessed, I'm wonderful, I am favored, I am rich in wealth and in spirit and in health, you know what I'm saying, and in favor and in influence. Man, people, it's not just about the money. You know what I'm saying? You, you got to watch what, that's going to be a whole nother show. What come out your mouth mm-hmm. will be in your atmosphere, like for real. That That yeah. whole thing I can't yeah. take it today. I can't my, take it. My mom hit me with that. You know, my mom's mm. a minister. And I never knew that. Yeah, oh, she, she hits yeah. me. She hits me with it all the time. Mm. You ain't saying it right. And she hit me with it in a way, Michelle, that, that I really got it. She said, the will of God is voice activated. Come on. You better come on, Mama Tiz. I come said, on. I said, run that by me one more time. <laughs> Cause you know now the marketer in me is like, 
Oh, there's man, yeah, that's that's the name of the podcast, Ma. Come on, let me get you in front of this camera. And it, it, yeah, yeah, the will of God mm -hmm. is voice activated. She said, Cortez, you're thinking that, but you gotta say it. There it is. And there like, it is. Oh, life and death. Ma, don't do that to me, but man, you know, man, that, that's true, man. That we we have the truth. God has given us so much dominion. Now, God is 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 sovereign, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. he's going to truly, truly run it all. But he's given us so much. He's given yeah. us so much power and control, and it, it comes out of here. What's yeah. coming from your own mouth is going to make a world of difference of what's going on in your world, what you yeah. allow, and, and, and the things that you that you have a temper for. So, woo we? how you win the race, right? So let's talk about uh, competing, competing, you know, competition. Yeah. Um, on the other side of comparison is competition. Now, you can't really get away from competition. It's life. It's all around us. It's kind of what happens or whatnot. The biggest thing that I think a person can learn about competition is, again, don't look over the gate at your neighbor and compare mm -hmm. yourself to your neighbor. Compete with yourself, which is cliche. Cliche, however, mm -hmm. true, right? Yeah. If you mark yourself, where was I at yesterday? Okay, I performed right here yesterday. Today, I want to go further. You know, when, when I do get out there, which is springtime, and I'm so happy because I love to go walking outside and go to track in the springtime. I would often, I started out when I would go to the track racing grannies. Now, they didn't know they was in the competition with me, <laughs> but they was because I'd be walking around the track and I'm like, oh, Brady, who do you think you're getting out of them hips? <laughs> that hip, you better get another replacement. I got you. <laughs> they didn't know it was a competition going on. They're just out minding their business, trying to get their walk on. I'm competing with them in my mind. And what I started yeah. doing is I was like, I got to quit doing that because the brand is just whooping my tail. That's the first time. <laughs> but the second thing was I started setting mile markers for myself. Yesterday, I did four laps. Today, I'm going to push for five. Okay. Yesterday, I walked. Today, I'm going to try to jog a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. And and when I started focusing on me, man, I went deeper. It, yeah. it was a whole different kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? As long as the competition was outward with someone else, seems like I kind of lost every time. But once I start competing with me, I noticed myself passing the granny pack. It wasn't important. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I wasn't focusing on getting past them every day. I was focused on me and my journey and my walk and where this walk was taking me and leading me, both physically yeah. and mentally. Compete Love with it. yourself, not with other people. That's the biggest yeah. takeaway because I know we're getting short on time. So biggest yeah, takeaway. Getting, getting understanding that I just need to grow a little bit. My mentor has got me taking cold showers, right? Oh. And the reason is you should, because, should answer, mentor. Okay. <laughs> because I want to consistently put myself in positions of discomfort. Ooh, so when the world that. throws discomfort at me, Ooh. I'm used to being uncomfortable. Come on with it. Man. So when I compete and then when I come out of the shower, I come out a brand new person every day. So when you think about competing with yourself, it's like, hey, man, to get a little bit better. One percent increase in productivity, one percent increase in getting better every day over the course of the year. That's three hundred sixty five percent better. Just a little bit. We that's think awesome. that we need these big, humongous leaps. No, it's a thousand tiny little things that create that one big momentous leap, right? Yeah. So losing and failing matters. Yes, um, matters. Fail big, fail often. The faster you fail, the faster you grow. People don't Come get on. that. Yep. It's like, hey, I'm trying not to lose. No, I'm trying to see how fast I can lose because there's a lesson in that loss that's going to help take me to the next level. So yep. the quicker I can get to the loss, the quicker I can get to the lesson. Man, come and on. That's the game plan, right? You got to fail is. fast, fail often. The kid who shoots 100 jumpers a day in basketball will mm -hmm. never be as good as the kid who shoots 1,000. Why? Because the kid who shoots 1,000 is failing more and faster than the kid who only shoots 100. So he yep. gets exponentially better. Yep. But we Absolutely. see failure as something to be ashamed of. Mm -hmm. And it's part of the success equation. It has, Ladies to, and gentlemen, it has to be there. It has to be there. We got to leave it right there because it is 759. 
but we appreciate you guys for all tuning in. If you uh, commented your takeaway for today, you will be entered into the drawing to win a free vacation tomorrow live. But you got to take Michelle. So with that, man, we love you guys. Thank you so much. Till we talk to you guys next time, we want you to get your money up because you absolutely can do it. But more importantly, you deserve to do it, each and every single one of you. Now hustle up. Awesome.